my name's Denitra. This is my dachshund, Molly Sue. This is my tiny home, Bethany Blue, and we're here at a Coney Bell in North Carolina. I like to travel. I like animals. I'm a counselor. I'm a Christian-based therapist. Tuesday through Friday, I'm talking to people about their problems. <laughs> I've been a social worker for the last 12 years. So yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Yeah, I actually had a three-level townhome in Vegas. It was a beautiful townhome, and I was renting it. You know, just with the pandemic and everything, so much had changed, and I had always wanted to be in a tiny house. But I was just apprehensive about going through the process. Actually, I was scared of figuring out how to set the foundation for that as far as water hookups and electricity and getting the tiny house and where am I gonna put it? Just all these different things. So I just hadn't went forward in that area, but the pandemic really pushed me outside of my comfort zone. I wanted to get out of the city and I wanted to move to the country. I went forward and I actually got a, a trailer and I renovated it. And when I lived in it, I was like, well, if I could live in this, surely, I could be just fine in a tiny house. And I was looking around on a website and I saw a girl who had the same exact tiny house as I did. I thought, well, this girl is single and she has a tiny house. If she could do it, I can do it. And I prayed, I, I prayed and I said, Lord, if you could do it for her, you could do it for me. I've been living tiny for two years now. I have an eight by 26 tumbleweed tiny home. I believe it's the Cypress Equator. I've been here for the last three months. I'm a newbie. I am here on the corner lot. I really like it because it's by the creek. It's very quiet. I get to see a lot of the different dogs because a lot of people walk their dogs on this little trail here. It's very open. I also like that there are so many hiking trails here. I love to hike, love to walk. It's a lot of nice open space and I enjoy just meeting the different neighbors and you're not so closed in. You're not right next to someone. You have a generous amount of space. So I call my tiny house Bethany Blue, AKA BB. Come on in and let's take a tour. Welcome to Bethany Blue. So my tiny home is 272 square feet. Really happy about it. It's a perfect size for me. I always tell people if I was to get married or anything, uh, he would just only be able to bring his drawers in here. He wouldn't be able to have no clothes because uh, I have this place locked and loaded, okay? Every nook and cranny is all my stuff. So I am so grateful because it's just the perfect little setup just for me. So this is my fabulous entryway. I'm so grateful because when I first moved here, this was all just a blank slate. One of those things that you realize when you first move into a house like this is that you need to have somewhere to put things. And I didn't factor that in. So I went to Ikea. Ikea is the best place for tiny homes. And I found this little drop down storage unit for shoes. So I put all my shoes here. I have a place to put my keys, chapstick, coats, jackets. This is really even better during the winter time because you got the bulky boots and the bulky jackets. And so it's just very convenient to have it all in one space and have it organized. Then we come over here into my little nook area. This again was kind of a blank slate when I first moved here. It was just pretty much a hole and it wasn't practical at all. It was very hard for me to find a piece of furniture to fit inside this space. I was able to connect with a builder and he was able to come out and put in pretty much a big, huge drawer for me to be able to store things under, but also a space for me to be able to sit in. 
and it gives me a space to put my exercise mat. I do a lot of Pilates, so I can put weights in one of the sections. I don't have a file cabinet, so I have things to put files in in that section. So it's just good. All those little things that you need, but you don't need them every day, but you need to have access to them. And this table here, I sit this way long ways a lot. And the original plan for the table was for me to be able to sit my feet on when I'm sitting in the nook so I can make it like almost a L shape couch. But the other benefit of having this is if I'm laying sitting this way, I can use it as a side table. So it functions as a little ottoman and also a side table. And then it just kind of locks back into place when I am not using it. And this is my storage loft. This loft is very, very handy because it allows me to store my off season things. So I usually go through it and take everything down like twice, two, three times a year. And then we come here to the little dining room area. This functions as an exercise area when it is folded down. It, it took me having to do some maneuvering for a few months to get used to it. It's just enough space for me to be able to work out. So I'm very thankful for that. And when I am not working out, I usually have it folded up. Excuse me, Molly Sue. Molly Sue run the house. I just want y'all to know that. So I usually have it folded up and... It functions as a dining room table. I do a lot of crafting, so I'll pull my crafts out. I have like drawers on the side here. It does fold out on the other side and can seat six people. I don't think I'm ever gonna have six people in here for dinner, but if push come to shove and that happens, at least it's an option, okay? This part of my house is the kitchen. This is where it all goes down, right? I love to cook. I am gluten-free, soy-free, oil-free, and I am vegan. So I do a lot of cooking. I pretty much cook everything from scratch. So this is a very important part of the house for me. I like to have things accessible and functional and organized. That is my motto. So my whole purpose in this whole section was to make it look nice, of course, but also to have things here that I could use and grab and for it to be very functional for me when I'm trying to get to things. I have my spices here, a little two-tier spice rack. That's very convenient. I have a three burner gas stove. It runs on propane. It does come with a, a pretty generous size oven. I do have some things that I store in here, my tortilla maker and things of that sort. I really like it. The only thing is you really can't put three pots on here at the same time. I usually only have about two things going. But usually I just try to keep it at one and I also have an electric cooktop that I use if I need more space. I like it. And you can also put this down when it's not in use to just kind of close it up and you can work on top of here too if you need to. So it gives you a little more uh, prep space. And this is my drawer. This is kind of the catch all drawer for the kitchen. Has all my different utensils and things for me to be able to cook. So that is very functional. Here I have a pantry area. When I originally moved here, all of these little cubbies were open and the builder who built the nook, he put doors on them and he also put in two slide outs here. These were just pretty much open holes. And so thankfully I got these two slide outs put in. This holds all of my herbs and teas and things of that sort. So I can keep them nice and organized. And this one holds all of my cans and the rest of my spices. So this works out perfectly. This is a Splendide washer dryer combo. I do not like it. I'm just gonna be real with y'all. I would not get this. I do not think that washers and dryers need to be together. I've had a few problems with it. It works, so I don't complain. Thank God I got a place to wash my clothes and dry them. But if I had to choose, I would have gotten a regular size washer and dryer. It's to me, not the most practical thing, but it's good. It fits cozy in this space. 
And for now, where I'm at in my life, it definitely works. Here we have the other side of the kitchen, which is very handy for me. This was actually this little cutout space that they originally wanted to put a microwave, but I don't use microwave, so I use it for all of my appliances because I cook everything from scratch, so I got a lot of appliances. So I had to find appliances that could fit in this space. I bought this little cute little toaster oven. It's super tiny, but it's perfect for just me. And it's easy, I can just put it right on the counter. And here I have my Instant Pot, food processor, a juicer, and then my air fryer. So I'm able to just kind of pull things in and out as I make a meal. My fridge is a, it's like an apartment size fridge. It's small, y'all, okay? I'm just gonna show you. Now, you look, don't judge me, okay? Everything else in here is organized but this, okay? It's, I just, I was just stuffing stuff in here. Um, I gotta make it look a little nicer than that. But anyway, this is the one thing that I struggle with because um, I like to store food and because I make everything from scratch, storing different things is very important to me. But this right here uh, is small. So um, I'm struggling with that. But the bottom side of it fit is perfect. Um, just It just fits everything that I need. And then I have another pull-out pantry. This was part of the build that I had them put in. And down here is my little baking section. I have all my baking stuff here and then the rest of my containers. So it just works out perfect. On the other side, I have my closet. This is my closet. Originally when it came, it was a rod that they put here, but that just was not practical uh, for me. So I went on the hunt at a container store, found all these different containers. And so it's good to be able to pull things out. Then I have uh, a solar generator down here that I can flip on. I got that included with the build. So if the power ever went out, I can flip on the solar. And then I have this big, huge, ugly water heater. I did not realize that this big old thing would uh, take up half the closet, but I pray these God because you need to keep some hot water and nobody wants to take a cold shower. My tiny house was 98,000. Some people may think that's super expensive. And at first for me, it was super expensive, right? So I was originally going to go with a used tiny home, but the process of getting a loan, I mean, there's only so many ways you could do it. You either need to have the upfront cash or you need to get a loan. And a personal loan, the interest on a personal loan is gargantuous. So I went through Tumbleweed and had to go through the whole custom route, which made it more expensive. And I actually was really happy that I did that because I ended up getting a tiny home mortgage loan. And as a result of that, the interest rate was way lower. So I pay way less for a mortgage because I was like really anxious about the idea of paying for that. Is it worth it? Should I do that? But it was either that or pay for an apartment because I couldn't afford to buy a traditional big home and I didn't really want that anyway. What I did was I sat down and I added up all of the years of rent that I've paid over the last 15 years. Well, look, I'm telling my age, but what, 20 years, I'm 39. So I've been out of the house since I was 18. I added up all the years of rent that I have paid and it came to over 300,000. And when I saw that, it shifted my whole perspective. You know, you sitting up here crying about $98,000 when you paid this gargantuous amount of money. You could have had three tiny homes. You could have had a regular house. So when I added that up, it really put things into perspective for me. And this is something that I own. And nothing wrong with renting. I did it for a very long time, but for the lifestyle that I wanted, it just wasn't practical anymore. And for the cost of living now, is just so expensive. So it just made a whole lot of sense for me, but I would like to pay it off within five to seven years. That's my goal. And I think it's doable. It's just, you know, putting pressure on myself to double, triple payments, but that's very doable. 
And this is my bathroom. It's my tiny bathroom, but it's super functional. And I was able to find this little shelf from Home Goods, and it fit perfectly in this space because there was nothing under here under the sink. And it houses all of my knickknacks, everything that I need. Then I have a nice little medicine cabinet here that houses more things. I used to have a compost toilet. Glory be to God, I have a flush toilet right now. I'm so grateful that I do not have to deal with that. I watched so many different videos about people who had compost toilets. And I, I don't, I, I don't know. I, the dumping and all of that, I just, it was, I'm very grateful to be able to flush and walk away. You just never appreciate these things until you put in a situation where you got to have something different. So I definitely like a flush toilet. My shower took some getting used to in the very beginning. It is a little smaller than a standard shower, but now I'm very used to it. And in the back here is my office. This is where it all goes down during the week. I spend a lot of my time in here. As I said, I'm a therapist. And so I spend a lot of time talking to people. All my sessions are virtual. So I am here most of the time. This is a standing desk and this is a standing desk chair. So I'm sitting and standing and sitting and standing. And it has all my books, everything I need to be able to access different materials if I'm helping clients with homework and different things that I give them during the sessions. It's not that big, as you can tell. I can't even stretch my arms out, barely. I can't stretch both arms. This is about how wide it is. And, um, but I don't feel claustrophobic. Surprisingly, I feel very cozy in this little office. So it's built by Tumbleweed Tiny Homes. It was delivered from Colorado. And the first day I got it, I'm telling you, it was probably one of the best days of my life seeing it pull up into the driveway. And it was scary because it was in the West Virginia mountains. And uh, it was the, where I had the slab made for it to be was on a slope. And so... I just had confidence that he would be able to get it parked in there. And when he pulled in, he said, oh, I can do it. And he was so confident. So I knew, oh, he got it. And so he pulled it in just fine. But getting it out was very scary. I took it to Tennessee. I planned on staying there. I was supposed to be on a, a couple's property. And it just wasn't the best fit when I had first started exploring the idea of tiny homes, I had learned about a Coney Bell. And I always wanted to come here and visit, but I'd never really gotten the time. I reached out to John and within a few days, he wrote me back and said they had a spot. And I was just over the moon, excited. I paid six twenty five. dollars Some people may think that that's expensive. It wasn't expensive to me with the amenities you get. And I also like that I live close to the city. So if I need to run into town to get something, I like that the hiking trails that it's on 50 acres. I just love the whole community feel. I don't have to worry about cutting grass and weed whacking and the trash. It's just a very nice, well-kept, well-groomed community. I don't have any complaints. And so to me, it's worth that. You know, I mean, I was paying, you know, almost $2,000 being in Vegas. So to me, that is well worth it. So my stairs, uh, <laughs> these stairs are super duper steep. I fell twice, busted my behind and had a huge red purple mark. So I had to get used to these because they are not like regular stairs. It was a transition period for me. This here is some more storage space. These three little cubbies. That's where I store my pots, pans, and uh, some more appliances. And so that's nice and tucked away. I really like it. This here is a dehumidifier. I run it every day, all day. We're in a pretty humid area here, so it's pretty necessary. Okay, and so now let's go up to my sleeping loft. Okay, this is where I sleep. 
It is a nice, cozy memory foam mattress. I believe it's an eight inch mattress. So it just gives me just enough space to put my head up. That's pretty much it. I don't do a whole lot up here, but sleep. I do have some storage space here where I hold all of my dresses and sweaters, bulky things, big bulky clothing. I have it stored up here. I also have a fan up here. It's like a Dyson fan heater and my air purifier to just keep things cool in the evening. There are not a whole lot of people that look like me, black folks, we don't do this. You know, getting tiny houses is too much claustrophobia for us, you know? So I, this is definitely out of the norm <laughs> for my community, but I have to be who I am. I'm just not the type of person to want a whole lot. I don't need a whole lot. I can be pretty sufficient and practical with making the best out of just what I have. I can do that pretty well. And I'm glad because I'm not really that stressed. I really try to keep a peaceful home. This is just a safe space. So I'm glad that I am here. And I just encourage those who are wanting to explore this to go forward. It can be intimidating. And I just encourage you to go forward. And I'm glad that I took the leap of faith and went forward and did it. And my faith really made all the difference. You know, everybody don't have the same faith and, and that's that whatever you believe is what you believe. But my faith is really what allowed me to be able to jump in and do it and go forward. And I'm glad that I was able to stand firm on that and stand true to who I am and what it is that I want as a woman and where I am right now in my life and not look at what everybody else is doing and what everybody else has and really focus on where do I wanna be in my life. This has been one of the best decisions of my life. The whole process, the good, the bad, it has been one of the best decisions and I'm, I'm just very grateful. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.